Hey, this is Marlon Taylor, the young Mike Hanlon from Stephen King's It, and you are listening to Without Your Head. Welcome to the station of decapitation without your head. I'm Nasty Neal, and I'm joined by Brandon Crane, the young Ben Hanscom of Stephen King's It, the original one, the original middle series. Hello, how hello. you doing? Hey, I'm so, doing great. How, awesome. Uh, I, I'm a huge fan of the original miniseries and actually the new movie. Uh, did you see the new one? I did. I saw it last Thursday and I was totally blown away. Uh huh. I saw it last Thursday no, as well. I lo- yeah, no, I loved it. I, I, I wanted to be one of the first people to see it. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been waiting for it to come, you know, for, for many years. I know Warner brothers had threatened to do it three or four times now. Mm-hmm. And, um, and to see it finally happen, uh, it was a beautiful thing. Yeah. So is it is it weird at all to see, you know, since it's a character you played, to see it, uh, you know, with someone else playing it? It's totally weird. Um, <laughs> yeah. The, the thought of, of having someone else do something that you created um, mm-hmm. was bizarre. It was really weird at first, um, but uh, but exciting. You know, I, I was rooting for uh, Jeremy Ray Taylor, uh, the whole time. In fact, right after the cast announcement uh, happened, we crossed paths on Facebook. Oh, cool! And um, yeah, we've been we've been talking ever since. So I'm um, we've got nothing but a hundred percent support for me. Whatever mm-hmm. that's worth. He's uh, he's a big time movie <laughs> star now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they went a little more uh, deeper with uh, the, with the with the bully scene where uh, Henry Bowers is carving. Uh, the, the name in, into your belly. Well, in the, in the Ben's belly. Yeah, no, they, that's definitely something that I don't think we would have gotten away with, uh, right. doing a television miniseries. Yeah. There were, um, there were, there were a few things that I was really, I mean, not to say I was happy with, um, you know, anyone having anything cut into their stomachs, but right. it was nice to see, it was nice to see some things that, that, uh, that didn't make, didn't make the miniseries. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how would you compare the Pennywises? Because they're, they're both very different. That's just it. I mean, it, it's it's apples and oranges. I think um, mm-hmm. I think Tim Curry uh, is still uh, an amazing Pennywise, and I think um, I think Skarsgård is um, is is a, a fantastic Pennywise in his own right. I think he brought a um, a much different. Uh, sensibility, obviously a much different character, um, a different whimsy. Um, I, I don't, I, I almost don't think that their performances are something that you could compare really. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Last week I kind of said it was to me, it's sort of like a uh, uh, Heath Ledger's Joker. I love, but that doesn't mean I didn't like Jack Nicholson's Joker. They're just completely exactly. different takes on, 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 a, on the same character. Exactly. I think I think within the context of this particular production, um, I, I think uh, Skarsgård did an amazing job. Mm-hmm. So, uh, how did you get the role uh, for the miniseries? It was a lot of auditions. Um, I had read the book uh, just before, so I, I, I found that really interesting. I, I just yeah. finished it, and it was probably a month or two, and I got a call. Uh, from my agent at the time to come audition for this. So I went to the audition and there were tons of other kids, other bands. And, um, having read the book, I, I think I had a good place to draw from. Mm -hmm. I think I understood the character more than, um, other kids would have who were just handed some sides, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just a couple of pages to read for the casting people. So I, I had something to reference. Um, and, you know, I thought the audition went as, as well as any audition could, but in this case, it, it took some time before I got a callback. So I had already written it off. I thought, Oh, well, you know, maybe, uh, maybe I, I didn't get it. Maybe I wasn't what they were looking for. Mm-hmm. And I went to the callback and more time passed. Then I got called into uh, some matchups in this was the second callback on a Saturday, and there were a lot of kids there. 
but there weren't any other bends. Mm-hmm. So uh, my hopes changed. I, I thought, wow, right. maybe maybe this is going to work out. Um, so I asked I asked the camera operator um, who had been in on the, the the whole casting process the whole time. And, and you don't do this. You never ask somebody in the casting office where. You know, and I mm-hmm. said, how come there aren't any other bends here? I, I mean, are you looking at other people? And, and he said, I think they're looking at a kid from Texas, um, a kid from Vancouver, but I think it's pretty much just you. So I walked out of there like, wow, I'm, I'm booking something that's not, um, that's not slapstick comedy. Mm-hmm. Um, which, which was terrifying, the thought of doing something completely new. But then enough time passed yet again where I thought, okay, this isn't, this isn't going to happen. Uh, mm-hmm. I guess I didn't get that one after all. Um, and then I got the call, and it was, it was beautiful. It was a whirlwind. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, I don't want to insult you at all. It's, uh, I'm a big guy, so, uh, so I think I can ask this. When they're when you're auditioning uh, at that age, how do they handle like when they're looking for like a heavy kid? Is it do they say that r- they, right away? Right away, there's and especially back then, um, you know, it's they they send out breakdowns. So there's a, a like a news wire for a to look at, and it gives detailed descriptions. You know, male. 12 to 15, uh, you know, fat or chronic masturbator. You know, that, that, <laughs> that was a breakdown. That was a breakdown for a character that I read for uh, <laughs> when I was like 13 or 14. You know, uh, that said this person is a chronic masturbator. <laughs> Not that that's what he does, but it's just to give you some insight into what, what may drive him, you know, what might drive your character. Uh-huh. Um, you know, since it's, it's, it is what it is. Yeah. They, yeah. they didn't. They never pulled any punches, and sure. And I think when they're when they're looking for a character, they want to be as specific as they can. And I, I don't think feelings are necessarily. Um, I don't think feelings are on the table. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Did Did you get the role of the of the chronic masturbator? Did you Did you get that one? I did not. I didn't <laughs> get that role. Uh huh. Which is which is which is all right. Uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Yeah. What are you gonna do? Uh-huh. Uh what you said you read the yeah. book. Was there anything about the Ben character that uh you could relate to? Well, yeah, certainly. I mean, I I wasn't um particularly popular in school. Um because I worked fairly often, I I was in my own way an outsider. Mm-hmm. Um we've already established that I was overweight. You know, um I had a lot sort of going against me socially and I, I could instantly relate to Ben. Um, and I'd been bullied. I'd been jumped, you know, picked on, um, you know, I you take those things in stride, but I, um, I actually found some courage in, in Ben Hanscom. And I think even shooting the, um, the bullying scenes with, with, um, Jared, mm-hmm. Um, it gave me some strength to, uh, to, to carry on. It gave me a little perspective. Mm-hmm. Um, you said, you said you read the book, so you just read it on your own. You didn't read it for the role. No. Yeah. No. My, uh, my neighbor who lived two doors down from, from me was a couple years older. Um, and we would trade music. We'd trade some books and, um, that summer, he got me into Metallica and uh, and Stephen King. Mm. So yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd read it uh, on my own, on my own volition. That's why I thought it was really serendipitous. Yeah, that um, I just finished this book, and and here I am getting a phone call to come audition for for um, uh, for the an movie, ideal yeah. character. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, it was it was cool. Mm. Life should work out that way more often. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, are you a horror movie fan, a horror, uh, a, a novel fan? Are you, are you a fan of horror? You know, I'm, uh, hmm, I'm a casual fan of horror. Um, I like, I appreciate the, the, um, the old camp movies because the mm-hmm. stuff that I would watch on VHS when I was 13, 14, 15 with my friends, um, you know, 
I mean, even the trauma films, I, I was, I was a fan of those just for the sheer, you know, camp. And whoa, I know I, I was really into the Friday the 13th movies because they gave my friends and I a chance to, you know, have live movie commentary, you know, run away, you moron, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> right. Um, but I think, um, you know, I think my opinion changed. I, I appreciate a certain type of horror. Um, I think the Blair Witch Project was something that, um, was was more suspenseful and and thrilling and and mm-hmm. unsettling um, that I could get behind and um, I think you know with the advent of CG and um, that's another really I really love the idea of of, um, of Andy being the director of the it feature was because I, I had seen Mama and I thought that was the most one of the most disturbing um, you know movie experiences I I had had so I. I figured he would um, he would certainly bring some terror, you know, some real terror mm-hmm. to the movie. Yeah, uh, you mentioned Blair yeah. Witch, just a, a real cheap plug. Uh, we just uh, ta- oh, I just talked to Eduardo uh, Sanchez yesterday, uh, the director of Blair Witch. So, uh, oh, cool, great movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, did you uh, did all the all the young actors who played the Losers Club? Did you all kind of bond as friends while you're making the movie? I think we really did. We were, um, we were kind of, oh, we were in a strange place, you know, with the exception of, of one or two of us, none of us were from the area. Um, you know, and so we were there for six or seven weeks and, uh, always working together. So we, we formed a a pretty good bond. I think, Mm -hmm. I think they, they did keep us fairly separated from, you know, from Jared and, uh, you know, and the other the other bullies, the older kids. Mm-hmm. I think just to, to make sure that to make sure that we were, I don't know, consistently terrified of them. Yeah, you weren't too familiar with them. Uh, did you did you stay in contact with with any of them after the movie? Yeah, I mean, off and on. Um, I I know I'd gone out a couple times with um, with Seth Green right afterwards. Um, but you know, we kind of parted ways there. Um, you know, it's just, it's a busy, it's a busy thing. I work, work for me started to slow down a little bit actually. So I focused on school and, um, you know, the internet sort of helped, uh, reconnect some of us. I, I ran into Ben Heller about 10 years ago. And then, um, so we, uh, we met for drinks and I, I talked to Emily from time to time. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that was cool. And in fact, uh, I saw Ben, Ben Heller, um, at the end of July for, um, the documentary mm-hmm. that, uh, that they're doing the, uh, the, the, the story of Pennywise. Yeah. So it was great to reconnect with him for a while. And, mm-hmm. uh, you know, so now we're, we're all sort of getting back together and there's, um, there's a, a convention at the end of uh, October uh, where Marlon and uh, and Emily will be, we're we're going to do um, an it panel, mm-hmm. which uh, which we're looking forward to. I'm really looking forward to seeing them again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, Marlon mentioned that last week, and uh, you've never done a convention before. No, I have not. I have not. It'll be uh, it'll be the first time, but I, I I'm really excited. There's yeah, been so cool. much. Um, yeah, I think it's. You know, it's, it's a great opportunity to meet people that um, you know that I've I've been communicating with um, on the internet from for a while now, and um, you know the minute that was announced, a lot of them were saying, "Yeah, I'm going to be there. Can't wait to meet you." And I, I think it's going to be great. Yeah, get to nope. get to connect with people that have been fans for so long. Mm-hmm. No, uh, Tim Curry, he's done a lot of conventions, but uh, what was Tim Curry like uh, on set? Tim Curry was, um, I, I said it a, a few times before, he is, he is watching him work, looking back at, and, and watching him work when we were working in, on the sewer set was mm-hmm. a master class, you know? Uh-huh. He, um, he was, you know, very approachable. We didn't really want to approach him just because I didn't, you know, we give him his process, give him his space. Mm-hmm. Um, but he was... Um, he was, uh, you know, really nice, 
nice person to work with. Um, but then the minute, you know, there's action, he, uh, he'd flip the switch and, and, uh, it was absolutely terrifying. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, what did you think of the, the movie the first time you saw it, the, uh, the original it? Well, I, I don't know. I, I wasn't a big fan, um, um, of, of watching myself. You, sure. I'm, I was always critical. Um, but then it came out on DVD and I watched it and, um, and I thought, oh, this is this is actually you know really really good, and especially you know horror made for television. Mm-hmm. You you just get afraid that that so much would get lost and it would get too put down. And uh, and I can see how it's held up for so long. I mean, there are 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 moments in it that are still you know very terrifying to to some people. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I, for me, it wasn't particularly terrifying. Um, I mean, I, I knew what was coming. Sure. But, you know, but, um, uh, but I, I can see how it's held up for so long, and I'm, I'm thankful it has. Yeah. When you watch it, do you see it as a movie, or do you kind of view it as a, you know, almost like a memory? Because, you, you, you know, you're in it. Yeah, no, I, when I see the scenes, I'm instantly taken back to being on set. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm kind of taken out of it. Uh, it. It's hard for me to really get into it because I know I'm, I'm imagining, you know, the 30 people on the other side of the frame, sure. you know, standing there watching uh-huh. you, um, you know, yeah. making sure you have the right amount of water on your face. And, you know, I mean, it's, but I remember those, I, I remember those, those moments fondly, mm-hmm. but it, it, it is distracting. You know, if you're trying to watch it you, to, to take yourself out of, the place where you were when you did it. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Uh, now, were you around the, uh, the adult actors at all? Uh, you know, the ones that, that played you, you guys when, when you're older. Every once in a while, um, we would share kind of the same space. Um, the only person I really got to connect with was John Ritter. And, um, and it was a good thing we did actually, because of all of the kids in the adult uh, pairs, we mm-hmm. looked the least alike. <laughs> so, you know, uh, so, you know, I mean, Jonathan Brandis totally looked, you know, they painted a mole on his face and he looked just like Richard Thomas. You know, these mm-hmm. kids were all very much, you didn't have to think too hard about it. So, you know, Tommy Lee Wallace said we should get together. And, um, and John Ritter was very gracious and he, he, he made the time in between takes out front of uh, Beverly's house to sit with me and, and, and go over things that we could do together that would help bridge that gap. You mm-hmm. know, the mannerisms, the speech. Yeah. I mean, it was great. And that was actually my first real, you know, I was always comic relief. I was always either eating something or falling down or saying something wildly inappropriate. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, this was a, the first opportunity for me to actually invest in a, in a character. Um, and he was, John Ritter was totally gracious with his time and, um, he gave me some tips and pointers and, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was a great experience. So I, I, I think one of my first acting lessons came from, from John Ritter. Mm-hmm. That's pretty awesome. And I, and you know, uh, I never heard that story before that, but it makes total sense because you'd want, you'd want, uh, even when you're older, you're going to have different, you know, certain mannerisms that you're never going to lose. Yeah, so we went with the fingernail biting. Um, yeah, we we came up with a couple of ideas, but that was the one that that stuck the most. So, yeah. you know, when when they segue from me in the classroom um, or into the classroom, you know, when John Ritter's you know up at the top of the high rise, drunk, he's biting uh-huh. his nail, and then mm. it, it cuts into me biting my nails, being you know nervous. Yeah, and it was. Yeah. Uh, it's a perfect thing to bring us together because I'll tell you, like when they do the fade from Richard Thomas to Jonathan Brandis, it, it looks like one of those things on the internet where you, you know, are, are swapping faces <laughs> uh-huh. um, with us, with us. It, it, it was, th- there was no such thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, John, Jonathan Brandis uh, passed away uh, a few years ago. Uh, well, I guess more than a few years ago. Did you, uh, were you, in contact with him at all after the movie or, and what did you, when you heard, no, the, not, not at all. We, uh, we never really connected afterwards. Um, yeah, we got along great. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I don't, to the best of my, you know, recollection, we, we didn't, I didn't find out until I was watching an in memoriam tribute. I, I think it was on the Oscars. Mm. Um, and I was like, what? <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. You know, what did I, what did I just watch? You know, I'm, I got on the Google machine and, um, you know, I found out that he had hung himself. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, it's unsettling. He had yeah. a lot going for him. Uh, you know, he, he was booking roles and, um, you know, there's really no telling what was going on um, inside his head. Mm-hmm. Now, um, you said you kind of stopped getting roles after uh, it. Is uh, is that the reason you left acting? Well, I took a I took a break. I, you know, part of me wanted to be a cop. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I figured I'd I'd done this, and I'd I'd worked for fourteen or fifteen years. Um. You know, I was looking for maybe maybe looking for something new, um, but at the same time, I did desperately need to finish school. I wasn't working all the time, so you know, it was almost becoming a distraction. And I think that my schoolwork was, you know, potentially in jeopardy. Uh-huh. Like getting out of high school with a good GPA. Um, you know, we child actors, we, we had a lot of protections, but we didn't have the same protections that the kids have now. I mean, Mm -hmm. my teachers in high school had no interest in prepping work for me, even if I, you know, offered to to pay to have it FedExed. Um, you know, they had, they were seeing 180 kids every day. They didn't have the time or the, the, um, inclination to, uh, to take time out of their day to to assemble packets of work for me. Mm Mm-hmm. So, and, you know, it's the middle of puberty. Things are getting weird. I was getting zits on my face. I was blowing up. Like, it was just, ah, it wasn't really working out. Yeah. So, I took a break. But then my first semester of college, I needed, um, I needed some more credits to have a full boat of units. Mm-hmm. And so, I, I went to, um, to work stage crew. I figured, easy A, right? for the, mm-hmm. this musical at the, at my college. And um, I remember that being my introduction to theater. So the following semester, I changed my, my major from criminal justice to, uh, to, uh, to acting. Mm-hmm. I thought, you know, this, this may be a good idea. And it was a whole new world. It was an amazing world to, to, to open up in front of me. And I, I'd do that for um, another 10 years. Mm -hmm. Um, do you ever miss acting something you'd ever want to, uh, try to get back into? I would, I just, I don't think it's, it's, it's a practical choice for me right now. Uh Um, I mean, the nature of casting has changed. Um, you know, before I could go in and, and my agent could set me up for an audition, even if it was something I wasn't necessarily right for. And if, um, and if I had a good reading or I had a good, um, session, it might change their mind about the character. You know, you, you, I could talk them into giving me the role. Um, but nowadays it's all sort of thumbnail email internet based. Um, and I, I just, I find it horribly impersonal. Mm-hmm. I, I could be wrong. It, that's just my take. I, I jumped into it for a couple months, um, about 10 years ago to try and do some, some commercials at least. And, yeah, it took me a while, and I I I, I booked a couple commercials, um, but I just I thought that the process maybe just wasn't for me anymore. Mm-hmm. The, yeah. Um, when you mentioned the, uh, the the documentary they're making, uh, I have um uh, a friend who's involved in that, and he said that the uh, it's not only about it, but it's also about the uh, the fear of clowns. That's that's really become a. Uh, prevalent the last few years, people seeing clowns pop up. Right. So, uh, do you have a fear of clowns? And what did you, what do you think about clowns, you know, really becoming such a mainstream thing now in, uh, in horror? Well, I feel sorry for the people that are making their living as clowns, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the base is being peeled away from you. Um, I, I've never really had a fear of clowns. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I always wondered, yeah, it just kind of reminds me of Pagliacci. You know, it reminds me of, of the the clown 
the unhappy clown. Mm -hmm. You know what? Um, you know, sometimes the funniest people have the um, have the, the darkest issues. Mm -hmm. So, I I might have some trepidation if I if I saw a clown and what's going on inside his brain, but I I, I don't have any fear that it's going to eat me. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. You know, I've never quite got been there. Been there. Got... Yeah. Been there, done that. Right. I'm not. I'm not really afraid of that. Yeah. But I, you know, honestly, I can't think of like the last positive uh, portrayal of a clown in a movie or TV show. They're always either a monster, yeah, right. or, or, you know, or, or a drunk. Kind of You're right. right. Yeah. Or a drunk. I think. I think the last happy portrayal was uh, Steve Martin in um, in Parenthood. Uh oh. Let's go. Let's go back. That may have been it. It probably was. Mm -hmm. it, uh, yeah. I, I know you have too much time here. I do want to ask a question, though, about uh, The Wonder Years, because those are my favorite shows. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, was, oh, uh, cool. I was the same age of uh, as uh, as the people involved in The Wonder Years when it was first on, so it was something I, I loved to watch. So uh, Doug Porter, and there's a Odd Man Out, I always thought was a really sad episode. Uh, do you remember that episode? Yeah. And, uh, oh, yeah. Uh, these uh, The Wonder Years. No, absolutely. Um, no, I I love that. I love that episode. I it was, it was kind of like uh, another chance for me to to shine a bit. Uh, but you know, there were a lot of uh, you know funny fat kid jokes to be made in it. Um, but I, uh, yeah, I remember that totally vividly. That was um, that was the coolest gig I've ever had. Is uh, that honestly? I think it's a. I always have it in my top like three or four uh, sitcoms of all time. Yeah, and it still it still holds up. I agree. There are people um, that are uh, just um, you, know, you think there's some some shows that are dated, and um, yeah, I, I don't think you can date the, the the coming of age. I think coming of age things. I think that's maybe why it did so well. Yeah, you know, it's it's these these coming of age things that I think everybody can relate to. Mm -hmm. So, you know, whether you're a kid of the eighties, like you and I were, um, you know, it's, um, it's, uh, it's, I think it's easy to relate to. And I think it's, um, I think it's something that it will always hold up, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's going to be interesting because you are the same age now of what the, uh, the characters would be growing up, you know, when the next it comes out. So, right. Is right. There, I don't know. Is, what's that? Is is that a weird experience? Because uh, the movie comes out, you know, twenty seven years later, after you did the, you played the kids, and now you're gonna <laughs> you kind of see yourself as an adult in the movie if you're not playing the character. It, it it is it is pretty weird. I mean, when you look back at how long it's been, I mean, the things you know, twenty seven years. That's that's a lifetime. Mm -hmm. It really is. Um, so I never imagined when I was 14, what life would be like when I was 40, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think in, in some cases we, we all may be older than, uh, some of the cast members, uh, who are playing the adults, you know, in the second right. part of the right. miniseries. It's just, mm -hmm. it's surreal, mm -hmm. totally surreal. But I think the timing is, is surreal as well. I mean, like you say, it's been 27 years, it's 27 years in the book. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, but then again, it's, it's, um, you know, it's like the Wonder Years too. It, mm -hmm. You know, the time was was uh, was just right. Mm -hmm. Well, I I appreciate coming on tonight, and I hope your knee is okay because I know you've got some kind of knee. Oh yeah, on. yeah. I'm gonna go get an MRI in a little bit, and uh, you know, figure out what's going on. I, I I think um, I think it's a lingering issue from an injury I had about 20 years ago. Okay. I think it's just kind of come back to uh, come back to haunt me, but I'm pretty sure I'll be fine. All right, you should have just said 27 years ago. Just to... I should have. Yeah, I know. hindsight's <laughs> 2020. Uh, and uh, and not, not just because you hear it, but uh, I always thought you. I I really still like the miniseries. I think it still holds up. But I always thought. Um, well, I thought the first half is my, is my favorite, and I always thought you, you particularly of the kids who I think I'll do a really good job. Uh, for me, you're always one that that stood out to me. Probably because I can also relate to uh, that. No, I I appreciate that very much. I I um, you know that that feedback is 
is um, something that it makes me happy. There's, there's so many people that are like, you know, I was that kid or I was you. I can relate to that character. I can relate to that portrayal. Um, you know, and, and it being someone who was kind of going through the same issues, mm-hmm. um, you know, it, 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 it's kind of warm and toasty. I feel like I, I may have helped some people get through it or, um, I don't know. It's, it's, it's cool. I, I love the, the nostalgia and I, I'm, uh, ooh, I'm glad you thought, uh, I'm glad you thought I did a good job. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, I hope you have a great time at the conventions and you get to, you know, hear, uh, I'm sure you've got emails and stuff, but you get to see a lot of people who grew up watching the movie or maybe even just discovered the movie yeah. and, and get to share some stories with you. I'm really excited about that. Um, and you know, like I said earlier, I'm really excited about this one uh, that's coming up. Um, cause I'll Son get to reconnect with losers. some of the other losers. Exactly. So exactly. I, I haven't seen them for, you know, a couple decades. Mm-hmm. So, um, well, that's going to be nice. I mean, it was definitely a huge part of my life and, um, to have people take an interest in something that was that important to me is, uh, it's really a big deal. Mm-hmm. And uh, how can people follow you online? Not like at your house. Oh yeah. Um, right. Yeah. Google earth. Uh, my address <laughs> is no, um, no, my, my website, um, that I, I finished a couple years ago. I just never did it. I'm, I'm also a web developer. So I, you know, what kind of developer doesn't have a showcase platform, right? right. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's gonna, it's, I'm working on it right now. It's going to be sort of repurposed to accommodate, you know, the acting as well. I'm, I'm working on that, but it's, it's Brandon and, um, and uh, on Instagram and Facebook, uh, you can find me at Brandon Crane dot or Brandon Crane TV, and uh, Twitter is Brandon Crane. Very cool. All right. Well, uh, pr- I really appreciate you coming on. It's been a good time. Oh, thank you for having me, and thanks for putting up with the scheduling difficulties. Oh, that's all right. Things things always happen. It's no big deal. That's cool. <laughs> all right, y'all go to WithoutYourHead.com. I'll come over there and put my boot up in your ass.